Good evening and welcome back to the Galway Film Fla and to the world premiere of Redemption of a Rogue. Uh, my name is Will Fitzgerald. I'm absolutely delighted that we could show this film to you this evening. Um, and I've got some people on the line who were, I think, were equally as delighted to get their film out into the world. Um, I'm joined by the director, Philip Doherty. We've got producers, um, Emma Foley and Tamron Renica. And we have some of the cast. We have Kieran Roach, we have uh, Aaron Monaghan, we have Ashley Gamara, and we have Liz Fitzgibbon. Lads, thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm assuming, did, was this anybody's first time watching it back or had you seen it before or? My first time. Liz, this is your first time. Kieran, you too. Yeah, yeah. Wow, reactions? <laughs> oh, very happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm joking, delighted. It's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's everything Good I stuff. can get out of Philip's crazy head, so yeah. <laughs> I think that's a uh, high praise there. Um, we've got some um, amazing reactions uh, coming in online as well. Um, Simon Mulholland says, great job, all involved. Um, we've got a couple of questions coming in. Um, Alison Spittle asks, how did they do that shot? But she doesn't specify. It's at the end. I'm guessing maybe she's asking about the hanging. Uh -oh. any, any movie making secrets you want to share there, Phil? So, um, no, it's all no. very secret and, and, and on the QT. Is it, <laughs> is it the shot? Is it? <laughs> it depends on the shot. She, she might clarify. Per, per, but per, you know what? Let's, per, let's per, go back per, to the... Per, Sorry, say it again, Erin. I was saying, Bershi, the DOP is the answer to any of those questions. <laughs> How did you get... Ah, uh, good man, Bershi. He is, he's brilliant. He's, he, is, uh, he is a master of his craft. Um, I might start with Emma and Tamron with you guys, um, with starting with the producers for a change because, you know, when I watch a film like this, it's so brilliantly original and there's so many little details um, and it all came together so beautifully. I, I always think that projects like this seems like they must have caught some kind of lightning in a bottle. Um, tell us about how the hell you pulled this all together. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Yeah, no, nobody knows. Uh, we're still trying to figure it out, and it was 100% not just us. That's no. what I'll say. Uh, Phil is a genius, and he. we were very lucky enough to be asked to come in and help with the project. And I think he brought in some incredible people before we even kind of came in to maybe help it take lift off. Uh, and then we were lucky enough to meet incredible people who said they would come on. And it was the most community driven thing you've ever seen like 500 people showed up for extras auditions we had hundreds of locals helping out like food catering uh, offering locations it was it was a incredible incredible experience but it, it what, wouldn't have been possible without all of the community out in Cavan. like Cavan is an incredible go shoot in Cavan. that's what i would say about <laughs> yeah. Look at that. the people in Cavan are keen to help out they're incredible so it's... yeah and I think like I like Sam said like they're they're bright people like Phil like had built so much already with his brother Joe who's just like incredible uh he's the definitely... production designer production designer Joe production designer Joe <laughs> and him and his team were just like phenomenal and we were lucky enough to bring in like Bershi and um kind of more the guys in the tech end and production end and it, it was just like very very fortunate lucky everyone got behind the script that Phil wrote like I will say that like everyone once once you read the script everyone was like okay cool, cool. I mean <laughs> it was actually easy <laughs> yeah. from there yeah. brilliant well that yeah I mean just taking your point about uh you know the the community-led spirit of it there it sets a high bar from now on for film production from the the Cavan County Council whenever I see them build at the top of a film in the future I know I'm in for a treat. <laughs> All the kinds um, of people are going to be getting phone calls. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Philip, so like the uh, like Emma and um, and Tamron said, uh, you know, this all came from your brilliant script. It's so original. Um, I loved it so much. I've kind of, um, you know, for want of sort of uh, better being able to articulate myself, I've been describing it to my my friends as sort of like Beckett meets Groundhog Day kind of. Um, where in the world this come from? Tell us how your brain works, because it's just great. Oh God, I don't know if you want to know, Will, to be honest. <laughs> um, I guess the, the, the script came from, um, well, I, it, it's a heightened version of personal experiences, believe it or not. So I think that's kind of where it came from. And 
I, I was mad to make a film with this um, community of, of people in, in Cavan that, um, that Tam and Emma alluded to there. So there's been an arts community there for 10 years and making art together. So I wrote three other scripts before I had the courage really to write Redemption of a Rogue. And I think it was kind of putting it off. Um, but this story was always kind of stuck with me. And it was one, you know, you, you kind of have a story nearly every idea every day, but there's very few of them that just stay with you and just won't leave you alone and are, you know, quite determined to just kind of bug you. So eventually I kind of had the, the, the courage to write this. And it was initially the idea was just a guy coming home with like a day to live and saying goodbye to the world. Um, but then when I started writing it, I think the big inspiration, just a couple of different things. I think, you know, the world that I'm from is Cavan and, and that world is full of beautifully mad characters and, and larger than life, larger than life characters and um, the language, the landscape, you know, all those things that I grew up with, um, you know, the tyrannical rule of GEA and their lotto draws. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, the, the religious undertones that are happening. And I think, you know, I, there is, I was brought up in a, in a, in a Catholic um, upbringing, a very happy childhood, but, you know, going to mass and going to church was a normal thing. And, you know, it wasn't that strange to see a, a statue kind of, um, to imagine that coming to a life or, or, or and hearing these stories. But the, the, the stations of the cross was kind of the, the thing that kind of I hung the whole film on. And um, because it was, um, I, I always kind of thought it was kind of like a movie storyboard, you know, these, these 14 kind of storyboards. So that's what I, I hung it on. And then the emotion of the character really uh, of Jimmy kind of comes from a personal place. And I wanted to give a glimpse into a sort of the, um, the mind of someone who's going through depression and who's suicidal and just the, the perverse and kind of strange sort of um, surreal and absurdist thoughts that you can be led down the path. And to deal with that with humor and to do a black comedy and to kind of find light in those dark situations. So that's kind of where, where it all came, came forward from. So um, I, I think, you know, humor is the it, uh, black comedy is my favorite um, genre because it, it, it finds those, you know, those light parts or it lifts you out of those unbearable situations. Absolutely. And I love just how uniquely Irish you made it. Uh, like you said, the, you know, the tyranny of local GA lotteries, the, the child of Prague uh, scenes, uh, just everything about it was just, uh, you know, um, so wonderful. But the way the, the local is universal is brilliant. Um, Aaron, um, maybe tell us about your, your, just your first reaction to reading this script. Um, I remember Philip telling me about it. He kind of had written the first draft and um, he was kind of pitching it to me. He was saying that he was going to make a, a film. It was a year before we read the final draft, I suppose, Philip. Um, and I think we've been looking for, we've been friends for like, since we we're 15. Um, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, but like Philip is an immensely talented man and his ambition and his imagination is, is even greater. Uh, and he just manages to get like this incredible group of people around. So I, I watched the last 10 years of Cavan Arts explode and um, my career was taking me away from it. So I wanted to be part of it. So when he sat down, he kind of told me the, the steps of this film, I was like, I'm in, like without a question. And um, he kind of, the, the, over the course of the year, he was sending me various versions of the scripts. Um, and, you know, it just, it, it, it became better. Is that fair to say, Philip? Like, I know, you, I know you wavered away from it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And then his determination just brought him back and you kind of, uh, to the original idea. And um, it was just compelling and it was like, um, it felt like it, it was an impossible film to make, especially on such a small budget. Um, but I kind of felt he could do it, and I, ju I just wanted to be part of it. And I, I certainly just wanted to dive in and be part of the challenge of making this absolutely mad film in my hometown. Um, and it, like, yeah, just the challenge of it—you couldn't say no to it. And like, I'm, I'm immensely proud of it. I was immensely proud doing it. It was immense. I think it's fair to say for all of us. It was a huge challenge. It was incredibly uh, satisfying doing it. And then to see the finished products like a year later, um, done like just polished so well. Everyone's, like there was tough days on us. Um, <laughs> and then there was- There was, <laughs> <Understand>. <laughs> there, was, there, was there was always something every day that you kind of go, wow, this is, this is a challenging film to make. And then you'd see a shot mm. or you'd see, you'd see like a, a playback of a certain scene and you kind of go, 
wow, this is incredible. And it always just drove you on. So it, it, as tough as it was, it always felt like a pleasure. So and I'm watching it back now. Like, I, I mean this sincerely. It's not because I'm live to the world or anything like that. Like, I'm, I'm immensely proud <laughs> of, of, of watching it. I, I don't say that lightly. As well, you should be. Kieran, tell us, uh, because, you know, Emma and Tamron don't want you to, about some of those uh, challenges uh, on any given day. <laughs> yeah. Nothing <laughs> about the challenges. Yeah. Um, the challenges were just really, really wet, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron was wet a lot of the time. You know, like, I, I think I came on set, like, what, what were you into shooting? Like, a week or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. A week into shooting, and uh, I actually came on kind of quite late. So my my initial reaction to the script was um, two feelings: one of, 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 of incredible enthusiasm, and and then excitement. But then also, uh, you know, I suppose a bit of trepidation. Where I was like, because the script is so visual, and there is so many, you know, kind of big sequences. I was I was curious as to how they were going to make it happen. So I kind of maybe tempered my expectations of what the set would be. And then I turned up on set and we did one scene and similar to Aaron, I caught, I caught a look at the monitor at one point and uh, Bershi was by the monitor and I went, oh, oh, it looks like a real movie. And, and then <laughs> and Bershi went, yeah, of course it is. And then I looked over to Aaron and he was shivering in a corner, you know, almost. <laughs> kind of so that set the tone, I suppose. <laughs> uh, well, the sacrifice that you guys put in is very visible on the screen. Um, Ashing um, and Liz, I wonder, you know, um, Aaron, Aaron and, and Phil touched on the, the religious uh, kind of undertone, but the religious kind of become, the undertones become overtones even. Um, and I wonder if you guys had discussed um, in advance uh, the sort of allegory of your characters uh, in this sort of, you know, 12 stages of the cross story that, that Philip uh, wrote. Well, um, I think for me with Masha, it's the Madonna and the whore. Um, and she's the outsider and in this town she is the outsider she's excluded and a little bit lost and I think that's why she I never really thought about the religious aspect yeah. probably because it's not in her it's not on her radar but she's so lost in this village and in this area that she gravitates to him because he's lost as well so it's people just want to belong I guess and she feels she belongs with him so does that make sense? Absolutely, it does. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, and Liz, yourself? I guess with Patricia, she was like the link to his past, and the the insight into what went before, and where his demons lay, and where they had come from, and even the demons that he didn't know about that confronted him when he got home. Um, yeah, the, the, the Mary Magdalene character. I'm not sure which one he is. It's, it's the Mary Magdalene. <laughs> Me. <one. laughs> But, but you know, ultimately, about in this film, that's about sort of, I suppose, you know, reasons to live and reasons to die and, and salvation. I think the, the women characters really are, uh, you know, his salvation in the end. Yeah, they're strong. They are. They're strong and they're forward and they don't apologize. And I remember Philip always saying that to me, like, Masha doesn't apologize, you know, like, go for it. You're going for a fear. You know, he calls me spiky as a person. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm lovely, I swear, I'm actually lovely. <laughs> but no, it's true, and they, they're, they're not apologetic, and, and they go for what they feel in it. I think which... that's one thing about Philip, you do always have very strong female characters in your pieces. You like to push the women out front, and, and they, they, like drive, they drive the story a lot of the time. They do drive it, you know. I mean, you, you're... Yeah. Too, <laughs> I, love, I love like Mash's reactions to Jimmy. Like so many times, you see Ash just like, okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> this is actually what we watched it earlier. Oh, okay, that's so you. Yeah, she said so that. Oh, that's so no. you. And you went, no, no. <laughs> and that's, and um, you don't often see that, you know, which was a delight within this this world where these women are just so forward and not taking any shit. Yeah, uh, one of many. And one of the things that I especially delighted in as well, which you've all kind of alluded at, is the, you know, the many little visual details. Um, uh, Emma and Tamron, you mentioned Joe, the production designer. Um, Phil, maybe tell us about uh, working with him. Um, and again, just all the little details, the visual cues in the film are, are wonderful and varied. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Joe Doherty is an incredible production designer. He's also my brother. Um, <laughs> 
So he's been true. They like, I mean, we've been working together in theater shows for years, and you know, he's been involved. We knew we were going to make a film for a long time, so he's been at the very, very start of this. But he's very experienced in, in, in working in the film industry. But um, I think one of the great um, love affairs of the whole uh, production was the marriage met in heaven between Joe's production design and Bershi's cinematography. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that was just, and it, it's just an example of those two things coming together and making the film look the, the way it was. But, but Joe pulled an army of volunteers together to, in the art department. It's incredible what he pulled off. He built sets, he built a train for that final shot there. And um, I don't know, I just, just a lovely spirit the whole time behind this project. And, um, and Joe epitomized that, the amount of people that came behind him in, in his art department. Can you tell us about some of the influences on the visual style as well? And maybe uh, while you're at it, uh, maybe tell us about, about your music choices too. Yeah, sure. So um, visual choices, I guess, uh, you know, um, as other filmmakers, they are quite varied, if I'm perfectly honest. I mean, the Coen brothers would be a, bit, a big inspiration to me. Um, the, the look of their films and the style of comedy and their tone, but they're larger than life characters in that. And I think, um, you know, the, the, um, the, the style of the comedy, the magical realism coming into it, probably a reference to maybe Groundhog Day would be a big influence on that as well. But, um, and a lot of the framing as well would be Wes Anderson and Orson Welles and, and, and those type of filmmakers that, that I'd be in, inspired by. And, um, and the music, I think, just to go back to the Coen brothers is very important because the early films like The Big Lebowski and, and, and the texture of films like um, Oh Brother Where Art Thou? And the music was so important to me and Robbie Perry composed all the original songs and, and there are a host of other cabin artists in there as well. It kind of represented, it's almost like a Greek chorus in the sense that they're, 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 the, the lyrics are also adding to the narrative, but it's also representing the other world encroaching into, into the modern world and, and that dreamlike feel to it. And Robbie has written some beautiful songs and um, the music was always an important part because I wrote it while listening to music. Um, and that was always the kind of starting point for, for me. A lot of uh, demands uh, in the social media reaction to the film um, for to, to find the soundtrack um, and to hear the score. The, the music is a big hit with everyone. Um, we also have some great comments coming in. Um, Patrick Finn says, Cracking movie, you really enjoyed it. Uh, Donal on Twitter says, great film and great art. Uh, great art hanging behind Philip. Oh, that's, what, that's a bit your personal art connection, not the film. But <laughs> still, we can take the compliment all the same. Part of Mighty D. Higgins here. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So it is. <laughs> um, the man himself, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here, any of us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Emma and Tavern, uh, tell us about the rain. <laughs> okay, moving on. No, you have to. It was so obviously when reading the script, like, I mean, well, one, we didn't have a lot of experience when making the we'd only been in film a year when we took this on, but obviously the biggest flag at the time was the rain. And uh, Phil, like, just said, Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> We've got this guy. Of course, he did. Guy in cabin. <laughs> Um, and we're like, okay, because like, we certainly can't make this film with, you know, rain rigs. Like that's the, the we costed it up. I remember we cost it up just in case. Like we should cost up how much it would cost like, to do the rain uh, ourselves. And we were like, oh well, we're, we won't make the film then. So we just we have to we have to go with uh, with this magical guy in cabin. Shane uh, Carroll. Who turned out to be Shane Carroll. Who's the, also the singing lady. He's amazing. For the dream sequences. He's like... A round of applause for Shane Carroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane Carroll built original rain rigs to make this film happen and he built a few not just one and he loaded up a huge truck full of water every day and he drove to set wow. uh, with his team an incredible team of guys who really put their heart and soul into it uh, a couple of them feature in the film as well if you keep your eyes peeled and uh, yeah they made it rain on Aaron and uh, we we couldn't be more thankful for that, but it was also quite harrowing for, for, for everyone on set. It was a lot of wet. There was a lot of wet and we, we learned very quickly what that what that's really like. And Aaron was an absolute champion. Yeah, I was like, I don't understand. Like Aaron came on to the 
film with like a sinus infection and then we were putting him in the rain in January in Cavan. So in snow. In snow. In snow. Like it was honestly like the 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 Jesus, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I don't like to talk about it now. Like, okay, it's Aaron put in a claim against us and I'm like, oh God. Shout out to Michelle with the hot water bottles, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I remember the first day I got wet and I was like, Jesus, how are you doing this? <laughs> I remember the first day you got wet. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. But yeah, no, really, the rain was not mere Tamron. The rain was 100% solely uh, Shane Farrell. Yeah. Fair play to Shane. Yeah. Um, so we've had that. Sorry, well, Shane had his own team uh, behind him on uh, the nickname on set. They were the Water Boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had um, a lot of uh, goodwill from um, some local, uh, the local Galway theatre scene, um, from Phoebe in particular, who you've worked with. Um, and there's obviously a lot of um, theatre influence in the film as well. Would you say that came in uh, handy in the production? Your experience, that is? Yeah, well, I mean... Um, I love visual theatre, but I mean, yeah, I've been working in theatre for a while now, and I just, I guess, I'm, I, I don't know, I could only direct a film the only way I, I know how, and that's coming from my, my theatre background, and, and I, I like to work with actors and, and be quite close to them and discuss and, and, and actually rehearse the scenes, and so I think that was, that was, you know, I enjoyed that element of it. Um, there was the more technical end that I probably had to learn, but yeah, I think there's some scenes that are in it that are very theatrical, um, the more the dream sequences, the, the 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 live singing within within the scenes, um, the scene through the window where, where Mash is singing. So I, I get I couldn't help but but bring theatricality to it because that's what I love to see and that's what I wanted to see in the film. Yeah, but to such great effect, I have to say, um, because it was always at the same time cinematic um, and and so beautiful to look at. Um, we're actually almost uh, out of time. Um, but I, I wanted to ask each of you, uh, perhaps really quickly, um, you know, this film, a story about a guy who can't seem to uh, get out of this town. Um, we've obviously all been locked down for the past number of months while you've been working away on this terrific film. Um, how has the time, the solitude, the isolation uh, treated you? Has it been good for creativity? Um, maybe, Kieran, if we start with you and then we'll, we'll work around the other way. I've gotten in the best shape of my life. <laughs> um, no, I think I suppose, uh, yeah, um, I was kind of, just, just before lockdown began, I was kind of wayward of routine anyway, you know? And uh, when it all began, uh, I suppose, I just felt like, a, you know, well, if I don't start, you know, getting a routine going now in terms of, I don't know, whatever, getting up early, eating better, working out more, walking, drinking less, writing more, whatever, then I, I might go crazy. So I suppose it's just, it's, it's, it's funnily enough, as chaotic as things have been, it's been uh, beneficial to me in terms of um, establishing a bit of order. And uh, I'm from Kerry originally, and uh, but I've been living up in Dublin. So I quarantined down in Kerry with my mom and my nieces and stuff, which I wouldn't have, uh, I, I don't get to see them that much. So that's been a really lovely thing that's come out of this, really? you know, just getting to hang around with family that you don't see that much. Yeah, yeah that's definitely been one of the benefits. Aaron, mm -hmm. yourself? See you. Oh, I think we might have lost <laughs> Bye. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I'm back. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Aaron, how's your lockdown been? Uh, Emma, how about you? Maybe we'll, uh, we'll, well pop up the top there. lockdown happened, I freaked out because I'm a planner and I had, we had like our plan, you know, for redemption for our next feature and all of this. And as soon as lockdown happened, it's like, oh, well, that's all screwed up now. So um, I love planning attack, I think, for the first couple of weeks and it was grand. But uh, I think the best thing, one of the best things that I hope Phil agrees anyway, like we, one of the decisions we made early on was like, okay, we're in lockdown. We actually were aiming for the FLA and then we thought, well, the FLA is not probably happening. So let's take a few weeks to just relax on the edit. 
<laughs> not worry about it. We you couldn't know, have that. Take that time to let it, you know, sit, and then we'll we'll revisit the film. Let's take our sweet time, and we did that. And I think it was, it, I think it benefited the film massively. Um, and that was definitely, I think, it, like worked out really well. But uh, scrambling trying to finish this film for the flat <laughs> as a result <laughs> was kind of well. We couldn't have you idle, you know. We wanted to give you something to do. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, oh, okay, shit, they're doing it. That means we have to, you know, do it as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that was um, the redemption has very much been at the the forefront of our of our lockdown. Of our a lot of zooms with Phil, <laughs> and, uh, which is great. Cameron, anything to add? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I thoroughly, oh, I, I never know if this is the right thing to say, but I thoroughly enjoyed lockdown. Um, <laughs> it's a given that we all feel terrible for, uh, you know, yeah. what it has to do, but yeah. Being alone suits me, so um, feel lighter, you feel the same. You 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 enjoyed the, the solitude. I feel like we bonded over that. We really enjoyed that, that element of it. But yeah, no, we got uh, we we got a lot of. I think for us it was a, it was great for development as well. We've we've kind of we both written a lot of, a lot during that time and been working on other projects. So it did it gave a lot of room for for space for breathing for thinking and ruminating on ideas that you don't normally get, especially when you're producing. It's very hands on, very logistical. It's kind of twenty four seven. It feels like sometimes. So it was a, it was a bit of a reprieve from that. Uh, and then the scramble for Galway was kind of like back to like sex. status quo. It was like, oh, this oh, is as hard as it was filming last year. Like there were moments where we were like, <laughs> nothing, rain is nothing. Have you ever done an edit this quickly? No. <laughs> so yeah, it was, uh, no, it's been, it's been a great few weeks, but yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, uh, all right. I'm, getting, I'm getting some noise there. Uh, Aaron, yourself? Um, I, I think I'm part of the Tamron and Philip Club. I, I really loved the lockdown. Um, I, I loved the quietness of it and the absolutely doing nothing and eventually gave myself uh, a break for doing nothing. Like there was the first couple of weeks where you have to do something productive. Um, and I, I found it really hard to come out of it. But I'm loving that so much stuff has gone online. Um, and I'm loving even the fact that we're you know, we're, we're, we're all missing the film fly, of course, of being there, but there's something good coming out of this as well that like, I think it brings great attention to all the, less about the business and more about the work, more about the films themselves. So um, it's cool. It's kind of brought, brought a bit of focus to uh, what is we do, I think. That's, that's my philosophy on it. That's true. My gran mm -hmm. is actually able to watch the film. And she might yeah, yeah. And yeah. like, she never would have been able to, you know, she wouldn't have come to the, the flat like had it been on there, so she's actually able to watch it tonight, which is really yeah. cool. So that's, that's awesome. Oh, that's great. What did your grand <laughs> think? Uh, I'm terrified to see yeah. her. I, I said to her, I was like, Is she on Twitter? I'll ask her. Uh... <laughs> I've asked her, yeah, ask Phil. <laughs> ask Phil uh, yeah. uh, Ashley and Liz, I'll uh, ask you guys to throw in your, your lockdown experiences real quick. Uh, I've done it tough. To be honest, uh, yeah, I found it tough because I was working on something and we had to, I was filming something, and we had to um, shut it down uh, with the week to go. So it was strange. And then I was in something that came out and it was a bit strange watching that at home, lockdown in Cork. So it's been lovely to uh, to get back with these guys. And this is first watch. night back in this Dublin. This is my first night back in Dublin since March. So it's been lovely to get together at my pals and watch some work that we made so a great is, film <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah this has been good for me i was um i was in a play that stopped so it would have been our opening night when everything stopped uh that was grand plays call shit which is gas <laughs> 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 from us, it was gone. um but i had a lovely kind of reflection time as an actor of not trying to jesus did you get that gig and fight for this it just kind of got off the hamster wheel I mean, it was it's nice for everyone else to be unemployed as well. That was what was really nice to <laughs> yeah. be. Happy we've heard we've heard a lot of that uh, yeah, at the flat this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for being unemployed because everyone was unemployed. So you're yeah. like, oh, you're on an airboat. There was a lot of <laughs> time and going. Okay, what do I actually want in life? Which I don't think we really get as actors sometimes because you're always for the next gig. Or you're always trying to look for the next one. And yeah, that and got and very it. apt to this film. <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, me and my dad got real close. Um, <laughs> we went for coffee every day. You know what I mean? That was cool. 
<laughs> Love to hear it. And Phil, uh, Mark O'Halloran told me the other day after Q&A that uh, he wrote six scripts in lockdown. So that's that's the number to beat. How are you doing? You um, um, I've <laughs> I have written one script. Um, it's a so I loved lockdown, by the way, and I'm guilty for saying that in a way because it was pure luxury. I've written a, a drive in theater show um, in, in August. So it's a, yeah, you can watch a car, watch a theater show while sitting in the car. And it's a, it's a car chase between a guard and a criminal. And that's the shameless plug. And I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> yeah, don't be. What this is for, yeah. uh, and, and while I'm plugging the artworks by Siobhan Harton, and it's the sacred heart of Michael Deed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, lo I loved lockdown. It was I, I actually went the opposite. I got all healthy and getting up at six in the morning and, and enjoyed the sunshine. It was it was lovely. And working with Alan Quigley, I had, a, I had a daily phone call with the editor, Alan Quigley, and it was just nice to work with a stuck face with him. Yeah. He's my best friend for about two months. Full of us for the whole crew. Um, again, more comments coming in that um, I'm able to get to. A lot of them are saying up cabin. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's one from, uh, I would think, was it Maureen Murphy? It said, up cabin. So, um, you know, I'm probably not doing that in the best accent possible. Uh, anyway, that's it for our time, guys. But thank you so much for sharing your film with us. Um, thanks so much for being part of the online Galway Film Plot. I hope it finds mega success afterwards. I can't wait for people to see it on the big screen as well. Um, and just, again, well done on such a, a wholly original piece of work. Cheers. Thanks, thanks so much, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.